What's up, what's up, what's up, my brothers and sisters in Christ? Welcome to another edition of the Sunday Word Report. And as you see today, I am not alone. Joining me here on the Sunday Word Report is my sister in Christ, my dear friend, Miss Chris Anna Johnson. Welcome to the Sunday Word Report. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. Miss Anna it has been a friend of mine since high school. And also, she was the recipient of the 2016, 2016 PAM Motivator of the Year Award a few years ago. So it's a great joy to have her on here. And I'm very excited about the topic we're going to talk about today here on the Sunday World Report, the blessings of single life. And I know this has been a very, very anticipated um, topic. A lot of people have been looking to hear about this. And um the scripture that I want to open up with comes from 1 Corinthians, the 7th chapter, and I'm going to just read verses 32 through 35 real quick. But I would not have you without carefulness. He that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married care for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. There is difference also between a wife and a virgin. The unmarried woman care for the things of the Lord that she may be holy both in body and in spirit. But she that is married care for the things of the world, how she may please her husband. And this I speak for your own profit, not that I may cast a snare upon you, but for that which is com comely. And that ye may attend upon, upon the Lord without distraction. So Paul really ain't, you know, knocking down married life. There's nothing wrong with being married. But, you know, when you get married, you know, there's, there comes a lot of responsibility. It's really a job. A lot of people you. don't like saying that. But it's, right. it's <laughs> a job. And that's why being single is a perfect time to get close to God and develop a relationship with God first and not only that prepare yourself for what's ahead prepare yourself for that husband for that wife you know um you shouldn't hop into a marriage and neither one of y'all have your own personal relationship with the Lord because really let me tell you what the um the truth of about marriage marriage is a ministry marriage is ordained by God let me put it like this it should be ordained by God but a lot of marriages nowadays are not ordained by God. It's just a lot of people jump into marriage without really thinking about what marriage is really all about. And 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 I I haven't talked about this much here on the Sunday Word Report, but I was married for six years, and that marriage really wasn't what God wanted. See, you got you got to be careful with how you feel because your feelings will fool you. I'm gonna talk more about that on God's recording on Round Here Radio later on this month. But I just want I just want to say that, you know, your feelings will fool you. Yeah. You know, you can't follow your own desires. Yeah. You got to follow what God wants for your life. And let me tell you that well let me tell you this when it comes to waiting on God, it's gonna be hard, but it's worth the wait. See, when you get married, your things are going to be focused not only just on the Lord. Yeah, the Lord should be the head, but when you get married, your focus is going to have to be on making sure you, you know, providing or making sure everything is straight. You have a tons more of responsibility when it comes to getting married than what you did before you got, you know, before you, when you were single. When you're single, you know, you could, could put your complete focus on the Lord. You don't have to worry about nobody else. You could just focus on you, and there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm, like I said, Paul was, you know, talking here. He's not necessarily saying that marriage is a bad thing. But when you're single and when, you're, when you don't have that distraction, you are able to get yourself together. Because there's nothing more sad than being in a marriage and you both are spiritually unstable. You got to you got to you got to be stable. You both got to have your own individual relationship with Christ before y'all right. both can unite and have a relationship with Christ. Right. Because if, if, let me tell you something. If you don't have that relationship with Christ and you get with somebody who don't have that relationship with Christ, it's, it's not it's not start off to be a good marriage. And there, there have been people who have gotten married and found Christ, at, you know, as the years went on. 
But right here, right now, if you are single and you are, you know, trying to have that closer connection with God, take this time out to just focus on your own personal growth, your own personal connection with God. And I guarantee you, waiting on that right man, that white, right woman, it's worth the wait. You just got to be focused on what God has for you. And I know you're going to say, well, you know, I know you're going to get your feelings. You're going to, you know, probably listen to, you know, R&B music and say, man, I really want to be in a relationship. I really want this. But just be reminded. Not listen to R&B music. That R&B I'm music. I'm just being real. I love my it's... R&B music now. It don't always it don't put me in my feelings. I love my R&B music. But um, now I see what you're saying. Um, yeah. I this ain't gonna be, let, just let all the viewers know this ain't gonna be your ordinary edition of the right. Sunday Word Report. Just want to give y'all a heads up. Yeah. But I'm just saying, a lot of people get in their feelings nowadays. Yeah. And I ain't gonna lie, I done been there. I think we all have been there at least once in life. I, I'm man enough to say I have been there. You right. know, you get in your feelings, but you have to quickly remind yourself that everything is worth the wait. It right. is definitely worth the way. Just be focused on yourself before you even think about trying to um, get with, get in a relationship with somebody or get married. Just take time for yourself. Well, I would say um, one of my main points, the thing that motivates me the most um, to just be joyous and be happy is the fact that, you know, when you know you love God, you know that um, he has his best he has his best intentions for you. So he's not trying to withhold something from you just for the sake of withholding something from you. So that would be the first thing. And then I like how you said that, you know, your feelings will fool you. And I believe that is absolutely true. A lot of times we, when you're single or when you get out of a relationship, sometimes you stay in a relationship longer because you think like, maybe I can't find someone else like that. Or maybe you just get stuck in a routine or you get attached very quickly and so it can be hard to um, break out of that and you know just move forward and be uh, and be encouraged but I will say though that and again your feelings will fool you as well because when you're single you might think man is it ever going to happen to me you see everyone else online you see everyone else like in your family you see all your friends and it's happening for them and so then I think in the back of your mind if not in the front of your mind you're always thinking like well dang when is it going to happen for me when am i going to find that special someone that i can be passionate about that i can come home to and things like that but um i would venture to say that you do have to hold out the reason why it's a blessing though i truly believe that it is a blessing and the reason why i truly believe that it's a blessing is because when you're single kind of similar to what you were saying when you're single you have the ability um to come and go as you please but most importantly that but for me though there's a difference between courting and dating right because um if you're dating right a lot of people like to say oh let's just see what's gonna happen no no no, no. i can see what's gonna happen by myself i don't really need to be in a relationship with you to see what's gonna happen but when you're courting someone there's a difference because they have intentions. I always like to say that a man has intentions. Men have intentions and women have intuition. So it's kind of like in the back of your mind, you might know as a woman whether or not, you know, this could work out. Um, or you might know whether or not you're interested on that level. And I think that you can tell a lot based on a man. You can tell a lot about a man based on the way that he uh, approaches you. So, and what I mean by that is that when he makes his when he makes his when he makes his um, actions clear, when he makes his intentions, his goals, everything is clear. It's not um, one sided. Oh, I don't know. Like it's not one sided to where you know you want to be married, but then you're thinking about whether or not he wants to be married, or is he interested in me like that? Does he really want to get to know me on that level? But when I feel as though a man tries to court you, then it's intentional from the beginning. It's intentional from the beginning. He's not coming to see what's gonna happen. He wants to get to know you. He wants to be serious with you. And he will make that known. You won't have to guess. It won't be attached to any drama, confusion. But it'll it'll just be um, something that will flow naturally because he will understand that where he his goals and he'll be able to 
um, that he'll be able to explain those to you um, for one thing. The other thing that um, I think makes it an absolute blessing is because the older that you get, right, the more established that you are in your career and just in life in general, um, it's hard to, I would say it's a risk even at times to uh, get in relationships because it's you deal with a lot on a job, you deal with a lot, you know, maybe in your family and things like that. So any little thing that throws you off can be detrimental. So it's hard to just get connected with someone and you don't really see a goal. So my thing is if I have a goal for my career, right? I have financial goals. I have a goal for my career. I had a educational goal, right? I had to, I get my degree. I was able to, you know, I had to do certain things for my, um, for my career, certain things in my finances. Like if I want that 850, um, score, right? Credit score. There are certain things that I have to do. Right? There are certain things that I literally have to do. It's not going to um, change or it's not going to get better if I don't do certain things. Right? If I don't have credit at all, that's, that doesn't help me either. But when I have credit, there are certain things that I have to do in order to get that 850 credit score. Right? But, um, and there are things that can be detrimental as well. So, my point is, just like everything else in my life is standardized, why would I allow my love life to just haphazardly, ha you know, to, to just go haphazardly? Why would I just allow anybody to come in my life and say, oh, yeah, let's just see what's going to happen. Let's just have fun. No, thank you. Because I know for a fact what my goal is. I know what I want to do. I know where I'm trying to uh, be. I know my goal in my love life. So therefore, if that's not your goal, let me know now. And it's okay, I can still be happy and I can enjoy my strength, I can enjoy my youth, I can focus on my other goals until I'm waiting on God to fulfill the goal for, for marriage. But one of the things that was very, very um, inspirational, man, I mean, this is so inspirational. I was watching a video about a young lady, her name is Emily Wilson. And she was talking about how she met her husband. And uh, what was so phenomenal about this occurrence, though, is that he was in another country. He was in a whole other country. And so what's so funny is we like to put God in a box, right? We like to say, man, I ain't gonna never, it ain't gonna never happen to me. Every time this always happens. But it's like, you're thinking about people in this region. You might be thinking about people that you already know, or maybe you're thinking about, you know, somebody that you have a crush on, somebody that you really like, but you don't even know that God, God has somebody in a whole nother country. It could be somebody in a whole nother country, but you can't put God in a box. So I like to think that when it's the right time, the paths were intersect like naturally it's literally going to be natural um she was living in california and um she was again focused on her career she was just living life being happy i mean just enjoying like i said enjoying her youth enjoying um just enjoying her her beauty just enjoying herself right and so she ended up uh going to holland she was in england for a conference and her husband had, well, her now husband at the time was a driver. And um, so what he, this was her first time outside of the, this was her first time outside of the United States when they went to, um, when they went to England. So when she got there, he was the one to pick her up and he was showing her around the city. So as he was showing her around the city, you know, they kind of got to know each other, but she didn't realize that he was actually one of the uh, main producers. Or I guess he was like one of the main people in charge of the conference as well. So to her, that stood out because, you know, in American culture, the person who is in charge would not also be the person drive, you know, picking up people from the airport and things like that. Like you want to see the pastor picking up you know, the guests from the airport. But in this case, it was kind of, uh, that was kind of the case, right? So he was in charge and he was doing a lot of things. 
and she was very drawn by that by his servant servitude right by his ability to be humble but that's a whole nother culture so you might be attracted to someone and uh it might not work out but you never know the reason the true reason why something didn't work out with somebody so you can't get caught up on why it didn't work out with that person you might know you might think that you know why it didn't work oh because we didn't get along or because we didn't we weren't on the same page we didn't have the same goals that's true but why didn't you have the same goals that's because god has a specific plan for your life and god has a specific plan for their life as well so it's not that you're a bad person or they're a bad person but it's just that with the goals that we have and the actually the calling that God has over our lives we can't just be connected to anyone and that goes for anybody we all have calls we all have gifts but it's certain people that God needs us to connect with in order to carry out um, his plan for our lives as a whole and individually so um, I truly believe that it's a blessing when you can just live your life freely thinking knowing that when it's when it's right when the time is right, it is going to literally intersect. Your path and his path is going to intersect. Literally, she was living her life. She was going to a conference and he was doing the same. But he he ended up being her driver. And, you know, it was a long-distance relationship. And this may seem like a stretch for some people, but I truly believe that anything can ha- possible. Anything can happen. Anything is possible. And um, it was just so inspirational to hear her say, um, to hear her say that this was something that happened you know years ago and then they got married and now they're still married and they're happy you see a lot of people get married real quick real young and there's no mm-hmm. knock on them either because I think when you know you know as well but that just goes to say that the reason why don't worry about why I didn't work out with those people don't worry about why they walked out of your life you can't focus on why you, you're still single you know, I think that's why a lot of times single life or singlehood, whatever you want to call it, is very indicative of um, loneliness. Is because when you're single, sometimes you do have those moments like you are speaking of earlier, where all you do is sit there and um, you just focus on the fact that you don't have anybody or you focus on the last person that you're with. That's what a lot of people do as well. Um, they sit there and they think about man I wish I wouldn't have done that or you know I wish I would have did this different and I truly believe if it was meant to work it would work the same way that when it's meant to be it will be you'll run right into that person and um you won't it won't be able to be mistaken you'll know exactly what they're supposed to do in your life but the true blessing is knowing that God got it knowing is knowing that you can surrender, that you can trust God to handle right. your love life. The same way that you trust God to handle your health, to wake you up every morning, to handle your career, to handle literally everything else in your life. It's the same way you got to trust God in your love life. You got to truly surrender. Because I can also say that the devil is a lie. He will have you believing that it's never going to happen to me. I might as well give up. It's too late for me. And I'm just tired of it. I might as well just move on. And I might as well just get a bunch of cats. Or just, you know, crazy things that, you know, people will start thinking. Because, um, like you said, the devil has come to destroy us. And if he can get into your brain and start making you feeling guilty over your last relationship. Start making you feeling ashamed because of your last relationship. Or if he can get into your brain and start making you feel less than. Start making you doubt yourself, right? Because supposedly nobody wants me. If he can check, if he can trick you into having low self-esteem and not walking in confidence, then it will be one of those things where you will just drown yourself in um, you can literally drown yourself in depression. You can drown yourself in loneliness. And, um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Like that can be, that is one of the attacks I believe of the devil is to make you feel like it's never gonna happen. You always messing up. You can't never get it right. And it's no, there are plenty of people who meet you. (laughs) First of all, you'll never be perfect. So when you meet the right person, it's not like, it's just going to fall in line like oh it's just perfect it's great you're still going to have some challenges so you still might feel 
um, tempted to think, oh man, see, I'll never be good enough. And so that's just a trick of the enemy. So I would say, get all of that out your mind. And truly, like I said, the joy of it is to know that God has it, just to know that I can just surrender myself completely over to God. I know that he got it. So why should I worry myself about who it's going to be, when it's going to happen? I ain't worry because I already know God got everything orchestrated. Um, in the same way that he's blessed me in the military, he's blessed my naval career, same way he's blessed my family, the same way he's going to bless my love life. And so it's actually exciting then when you start thinking like, oh, okay, God, how are you going to do this? Because like, you know, I'm feeling you know. You know how, how I keep Yeah, you'll be like, I see you, God. I see you. <laughs> right. I see you. Like, God, you know how I can be. So I'm just excited to see. I don't know how this thing will turn out, but I know that it is, it's going to it's going to um, happen. It's going to happen one day. God said, you know, Jesus said in uh, John chapter 4, he talked about how he's come that we might have life and life more abundantly. So life more abundantly doesn't mean that I'm lacking in my love life. It doesn't mean that I'm walking around sad, that I'm walking around lonely. I'm walking around constantly focused on the one area of my life that not that's not working out. So I got a career. I might have, you know, a lot of friends. I might have a great social life. I might have um, great goals that I'm meeting, productive every day. I'm doing all these great things. But then my love life is not sufficient or God, I'm still feeling like I'm lacking in that area. Mm -hmm. No. God said, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and life, life. more abundantly. So in every area of your life, it's, life is not just comprised of my love life. It's not just comprised of my career. It's a balance and it's a compilation of all those things. And so that means that the same way that he's blessed me financially, the same way that he's blessed me um, in my love, the same way he's blessing in my social life, you know, having true friends, that is a true blessing. Same way that it's great, all those great things that ha has happened, the same way it's going to happen in your love life. You got to just stop focusing so much on it and truly believe that God got it. He has a plan. I'm sorry. I know I'm talking a lot. Go on, hey, go on, hey, you speaking true. <laughs> The other scripture that I absolutely love when I think about any challenge that I that I face is Jeremiah 29 and 11. Yeah. Right? When he talks about how I have, I know the thoughts that I think of you. Right? He said, I have plans to prosper you and to give you an expected end. So if he already has an expected end, that means everything is already laid out. All I'm doing is going through the motions, you know, all I'm doing is staying connected to him so that he can lead and direct me. But it's literally already planned out. If I have an expected end, right, that means that he said, before you were formed in the womb, I knew you. So you had an expected beginning. So now mm, you have an right. expected end. So that means that in the middle, it's not just haphazardly. Nothing just happens. It, you didn't just meet that person. You didn't just become passionate about, you know, foster care. You didn't just become passionate about the military or leadership. It's a reason why. And so um, I truly believe that uh, if you just focus on that, that expected end, then you know that in the middle, it's not just thrown together. It's, it's a reason why why you're in this season that you're in because that's all it is it's just a season that you're in right now so don't let you know this season in your life dictate and rule your whole life but everything how you feel right now you know you're supposed to be happy right now I know a lot of people are depressed they they make an achievement or you know they'll have an accomplishment and they'll still when they get home you know they're sad you know, because they're focused on that one thing in life, you know, and I just, again, I believe that that's a, that's a trick, you know, that's something that will cause you to think like, man, my life is not great because I don't have my career in line or, you know, you can apply that to anything. Yes, I have my health. I have a great family, but maybe my career isn't in line. Maybe, you know, I haven't, I'm not where I want to be. So in life, maybe I'm not as uh, advanced in my 
degree or whatever case is. So now I feel like, dang, my life just sucks. Or, And so there are so many tricks that the enemy used to get into our brain. So I truly think that it's a mindset that you have to have in that it's going to be all right.